the good life full of fun seems to be the ideal yes the good life lets you hide all the sadness you feel ciao everybody welcome to my kitchen this is cooking italian with joe big day today guys big day this is a unbelievable entree that I had in Rome uh, many years ago and I uh, every time I go to Italy or almost every time I go to Italy I try to go to this restaurant right downtown Rome to have it and it's uh, ricotta gnocchi so it's, most people are familiar with gnocchis and they're uh, they're a potato based or traditionally been a, a potato based um, pasta in this case we're going to use ricotta cheese in place of the um, in place of the potatoes, so it's awesome. So we're gonna use ricotta cheese, and we've got about two pounds of ricotta cheese. We've got four eggs, all right? We're gonna put some grated Romano cheese. We've got four and a half cups of uh, flour, and I say four and a half cups, you're probably gonna use around four cups. Uh, sometimes uh, I'm getting emails and some questions on exactly, you know, uh, what is the measurement. The challenge sometimes is, on the eggs, a lot of times when you make pasta, if you have uh, more liquid in the egg, uh, you're going to need more flour, and they can throw it off by a quarter to half a cup. So just throwing that out there. So you're going to use four and a half cups because you're going to need something to dust the table, which I'll show you how to do that. We're going to use a little salt, a little pepper, and some olive oil. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those. I'm going to put them on a drying rack. And then, oh, one thing I forgot to tell you. Look at this baby right here. That's a gnocchi maker, okay? So what you're going to use is you're going to roll... The gnocchi, so sometimes people have seen gnocchis roll off the back of the fork, you know, the tines of fork, and that's great. Uh, this puts those grooves in there, and the grooves allow the, uh, allow the uh, sauce, whatever you put on there, to stick and adhere to the gnocchi, so that's great. So then we're going we're gonna to let those dry for a few minutes and get the water going, and then after that we're going to make some real simple, you're probably going to hate this, we're going to make some real simple butter, garlic, truffle, oil sauce unbelievable with a little cheese and um, it's gonna be absolutely delicious so I'm real excited about that so so this is fun this is a lot of fun uh, to make a gnocchi and it's something that I used to make with my grandmother she had this little uh, I, I shouldn't say a little probably a, a two foot by two foot piece of plywood uh, that was old at the time and uh, she had a rolling pin and that's that's all she used it was amazing she made she made miracles out of that so She'd always have a little radio in the corner playing music. My dad always did that down the restaurant, so kind of neat. So, so let's get started. So what we're going to do here, a little different um, than um, making a traditional pasta. Sometimes where you'll make a well, and you can kind of do that. But the way that I like to do it is uh, I'm going to just dust the top. We're going to use all the flour because we've got a baker's scrape, okay, or knife as they call them, okay? So you're going to use all that flour. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the ricotta cheese and you're gonna spread that across. And don't worry about it, just spread it right across. You're gonna make a mess. Think of yourself as being like a, a kid playing in the kitchen with your mother. This is the part you'd usually get yelled at. I've got Pandora Sinatra going right now. Unbelievable. So you spread this across, and, uh, and then, hold on. That's good. It's really good ricotta. You know, sometimes I'll see people, they'll, they'll ask me or they'll talk about maybe doing reduced fat and, and skim and so forth. And I, you know, I hear what you're saying, but it really, I think without that whole milk or that whole fat content, we made a panna cotta last night, if you guys haven't seen that. Um, I just think it ruins the flavor. A lot of the flavor in the cooking is going to essentially be from um, those fats, those oils and so forth. So then what we're going to do is we're going to... You're just making a mess, guys. It's, right now, I know it looks like a mess, but you're going to make a mess. I, if you listen to me talk before, I always like to mix the eggs first. That way, there you get a nice, even distribution of the egg. I just hate to have something, as you make it, all of a sudden you get a clump of egg in one section. So I'm going to... See, now the nice thing with the flour is you can, you can start to spread the... Oh, look at that, huh? And I know right now you're thinking like, oh, we got a break in the dam here. I know right now you're thinking, oh my God, this guy's just making a mess. And that's partly true, I will agree with you. It is, it is accurate. So, 
And I'm doing this in a little different manner than I would if I wasn't being recorded. So I'm gonna make a little bit more of a mess, so, okay? So, so essentially what we've got is you got the flour, the ricotta, and the eggs, okay? Now we're gonna want, you know, about a half of a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. So there's about a half, and I'm gonna use another half, okay? And then, really important, and I know I'm gonna make a mess with my olive oil here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take about a quarter cup of olive oil, okay? So again, I know, I know we're making a mess. Some of the recipes I look at, they don't put olive oil in, and I think that's a mistake, uh, just because it gives it that flavor. And this is as close as I've been able to come, and you're gonna put a couple of rounds of pepper in there. This is as close as I've been able to come. I know I made a mess on that. Um, to that recipe, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to incorporate it. And I know it's a disaster, okay? Because we're gonna get all of our hands dirty now, okay? Oh my God, isn't this a joke? You're like, what the heck is this guy doing, right? But a little tougher to make it. Now some of the directions I've seen, eh, you put it in a bowl and all that, but you know what, you just, you're gonna make a mess. I don't care what you do, you're gonna make a mess. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna make a, this is gonna make a dough, and you can already start to feel it form right now. There you go, oh, look at that, isn't that nice? I'm gonna spread it across. Cause this is real time video, and sometimes I make a mistake. And one of the mistakes I made is I didn't put cheese in there, so. What I like to do is I like to shred about a quarter cup of Romano cheese in there, okay? Now I could come up with a story and tell you that you're supposed to do it at this point of making the dough, but that wouldn't be true, I forgot to do it, so I'm gonna throw it in. But it doesn't matter anyway, so. So it's gonna give you another cheese in there, which is just great. Oh my God, I can smell that, so good. The, the bummer on that is I made a little bit of a mess, more of a mess, but that's right. And then you're just gonna to start to mix it. Now, what when this is gonna be great is right, almost right now, because what's happening is it's sticking to the table and it's it's wet, right? It's definitely not where we want it. So, like I said, I held back some of the flour in an effort to make sure that it wasn't too dry. And now I'm gonna spread the rest of that flour on there. So if you guys remember, I had four and a half cups of flour in there, okay? And like I said, no matter what, there you go. Now it's starting to make a dough. And it's funny, isn't it? It starts to just become a mess. And then all of a sudden it becomes awesomeness. And this is right now, I start to scrape it up. And I'll tell you, a lot of, a lot of times I watch people do it and they don't do it right then. But I'll tell you, now's the time to do it because if not, it gets so dry that you can never really incorporate all those little bits. And those are little bits of cheese, a little bits of salt, little bits of pepper. So now it doesn't look like so much of a mess, right? And that'll all incorporate. And remember, what's making the dough is the gluten. So what's gonna happen is gonna create like an elasticity to the, to the dough. There's a little piece right there. And it's still gonna be a little wet, so I might still need a little bit more flour, but that's all right. And what you're trying to do now is, you, know, you look at my hands, it started to look like a major mess. My grandmother would yell at me, Donna, she would yell at me when I would start, because they'd start to, I'd want to play at this point. And, uh, and doesn't that look fun? But the next thing you know, you get flour all over yourself, you got it all over the counter, all over your fingers, and... No, I'm gonna start yelling at me. What are you doing? What's going on? I'm gonna get some more flour, so bear with me. Now, what we'll do is you'll work the dough uh, for five minutes, then you let it rest. What I do is I'll, I'll work it five or 10 minutes, I'll let the dough rest. What that does is it lets the elasticity, the gluten rest, and it allows the uh, all the ingredients to mix with each other, okay? And then what you do is you work it another five to 10 minutes. It's getting a little bit wet again. That's good, look, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. 
Oh, and it has such a nice smell to it. And I gotta put a little bit more flour in there, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that rest for a minute, okay? I'm gonna clean up. All right, so what I did, welcome back. Isn't that beautiful? So over the last few minutes, what I did is I let, um, I let this rest, I cleaned the counter a little bit. As I told you a little bit, I made a mess, so I'm gonna put a little bit more flour. Now this is still, what you'll notice, and this is real common when you make a dough, a wet, or from more wet ingredients, in this case the, the eggs and the ricotta, because the ricotta cheese is gonna have um, a lot of moisture in it, and sometimes you can strain it. I see some people strain it with a cheesecloth, you know, you know, for a few hours before, and that's fine. In this case, you just add a little bit more flour. It's, it's not a big deal. But what you see is as this rests, it'll start to get a little wet because everything's being absorbed. Everything's starting to incorporate. See, now this is really getting to be good now. This is almost there. So just keep absorbing the flour. Probably needs just a little bit more. And that's good. And as you work it, you don't want to get it too dry. Then it's crumbly and it doesn't stick together and it's not elastic. But you don't want to have it too wet because then it's tough to work with. And I'd say we're... We are almost there. So some of that is, you know, as I said before, everybody wants to have an exact measurement. And I don't blame you. But sometimes with cooking, not so much baking, you'll find it's a little bit of an experience. You know, you need to you need to do it and kind of get a feel. Hey, you know, that's starting to get elastic. See, it's still a little bit wet. Oh yeah, it's got a nice feel. And you can smell it now. And that's gonna make a lot of gnocchi right there. So I'm gonna let that rest for another five minutes, okay? And then I'm just gonna scrape. These are great, you know, even if you're uh, on a different kind of work surface, this happens to be a stone surface, which is, in my view, the best, right? Now you're still gonna want that flour because you're gonna need that flour to, uh, to help roll it out, okay? So what I'm gonna do is roll it out and you're gonna to wanna to make it in about eight, eight different. You're gonna to wanna to section this up in about eight different pieces, okay? Then we got a little Dino going. You can kind of rock the dough to Dino. Maybe not. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, apparently five. What did I say, eight? I'll have to cut that in smaller. So now when we're making a gnocchi, we're gonna roll these out, okay? And if you remember, we did an orchietti before, right? And the orchiettis are great, and you're gonna do something very similar. These are gonna be cut a little bit wider, and then you're going to uh, spread them out on your gnocchi maker. So I'm gonna cut that in half. This will be a, a little bit more delicate dough than the potato dough. Because the starch in the potato reacts with the gluten and it makes a tougher or stronger dough. This one's a little bit more delicate, but that's fine. So this one I'm down to about a quarter. I want to go smaller than that. Okay, so I'm, I'm rolling this out, okay? And that's about right where I want it, all right? And that's perfect. And what I did is I cut a little piece off and threw it in the boiling water. A great, uh, when they float, they'll always sink. A gnocchi will always sink to the bottom and then it'll float up to the surface. Once it floats up to the surface, it's done. You can leave it in there maybe another minute or so. Um, but one of the reasons I always do that is you want to make sure that the consistency of the dough is right where you want it. And you don't, you hate to make all these gnocchis and all of a sudden have them fall apart. So I put it in here and just to show you, I'm going to pull that puppy out right there. Okay, and you see how it's, it's retained its shape, it's perfect, right? Um, oh my god. That is unbelievable. That is so good, it doesn't, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding you, it doesn't even really need anything on it, it's so good. Okay, so we're good here. Now, I always like to use this, you don't have to. 
and you're going to do that's the that's the size and shape of a gnocchi. You don't want to go too big because then obviously in your mouth it's going to be too big. We got a little Sinatra playing, Goffy Beans. This is from the Ring a Ding Ding album. In case I got any Sinatra fans listening. So I'll do one of these here on video. And then I mean, that's easy, right? How easy is that? Sometimes they'll stick together. I want a little bit light on the flour, so let me. And you remember if we, on our gnocchi, uh, I'm sorry, on our orchietti video, same thing. See these aren't stick, sticking so much, they're perfect. Okay, and then. So just so they don't stick together, and then I got a drying rack, and real easy, you're going to take your gnocchi, you can take your gnocchi, uh, look at that, isn't that perfect? Look at that, right? So you, and all you do is you take your thumb and just gently roll it, right? And these are gentle, these are, or these are delicate, so you can't go too hard, because of the ricotta makes them more delicate, okay? And then she's going to roll a few off. Now that's one way to do it. Some people don't have this beautiful, old, ancient, yaki device. So you can take a fork. And I, you know, you take a fork, you roll it backwards, and you just roll the yaki off the back. Okay? So you're going to roll it right off the back. Okay? And it gives you the grooves. Just the same way. See? So I like the... The wood on the uh, on the gnocchi roller or maker because or gnocchi board as they call it because it's so easy it's wide I don't have to go hard with it I just roll it off and the wood is a little bit it's sticky if you will it's got a little bit more friction so look at that aren't, aren't those beautiful but remember the grooves are so that the sauce sticks you don't have to have it perfect you don't have to have it all the way around. You just roll a bunch of them off, right? Look at that. And that's really what you're doing here. You're, that's the only reason you're putting the grooves. Typically the gnocchi grooves, I'm sorry, my mouth is watering here. The, the gnocchi uh, grooves are very traditional on a gnocchi. So that's what, in a sense, makes them gnocchi. Kevin Tell is going to have something similar, right? There you go. Perfect. And then what I do is I'm going to take them and then I just put them on my drying rack. Right? Look at that beautiful pa 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 boom boom. I know I'm getting flour all over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them all the way across. My grandmother and I had a different kind of rack system, so she would we'd make them same thing with the pastas. We'd make them off of her plywood. We'd roll everything out. We'd let it dry, always with some good music. My grandmother would always have a little beer, a little wine, which was so cute. Uh, I'd usually have hot chocolate and fried dough. But then after we'd make them, she'd let them set, and then uh, often she'd have a big. Uh, plate and she would actually bring it over. We wouldn't eat it at my grandmother's house most of the time. She lived in a very small place, but she lived right next door to my uh, parents. So she'd make a huge bowl of whatever she was making, some form of pasta, and then she'd always bring it over to my parents. I'd walk over with her, so it was so awesome. So I'm going to spend some time making these, putting these together. When we're done, I'm going to show you how to boil them, and then I'm going to show you how to make a nice, uh, what we're going to call a butter, garlic, and truffle oil sauce, just to put over the top with a little bit of uh, cheese. Oh my God, it's to die for. Talk to you guys in a few minutes. Hey guys, look at this. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So those are ricotta gnocchis, rolled out. We're gonna let them dry. As long as they're breathing, they'll, they'll dry. You don't want them to get hard. You can freeze those if you want as well. You can, they'll keep up to a few months, no problem. Just get them in a Ziploc bag and seal them up real tight. Make sure you put parchment paper in between them so they don't stick and then pull them out to thaw or they'll get all mushy on there just to give a heads up okay so we got some water boiling for our gnocchi okay and what I want to do is I want to, I want uh, to put together um, a sauce now you can do all different kinds of sauce you get a red sauce obviously I've got a couple of uh, sauces that I did videos on you can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel you can grab any uh, videos you want what we're gonna do today is a truffle sauce so we're gonna take about a quarter cup maybe a little bit more of olive oil all right, so this is going to be our sauce, okay? So say that's about a half of a cup, third to a half of a cup of olive oil, okay? Now, I have salted butter, and I have one stick of salted butter. I'm not going to use salt because I already have the butter salted, okay? So I'm going to put that in there, which is awesome. So now I've got the butter in there, one stick of butter, salted, so I'm not going to use any salt, and I've got the olive oil, okay? So what I'm going to do is let that, let that marry, and uh, it's going to get warm. 
which is beautiful. And I've got a, a quarter cup, a little bit less, of onions. Now, with the onion, what you want to do here, because this is going to be your sauce, again, you don't want to get your oil so hot that it fries it. You do not want to fry it, okay? So what we're going to do is just let that really cook down to make it really soft, because you don't want to have any crunch of an onion in the, in the dish. All right, and then we've got, of course, our garlic, okay, and i got four cloves of garlic. So i got a little bit more garlic, let's say, than you normally would, but it's going to have a little bit of a different mixture of flavors. And you've got a gnocchi, which is pretty heavy, even though those are a delicate ricotta cheese gnocchi. They're delicate, so this is going to cook down. That's beautiful, That the smell there. And what I did here is I, I have some dry rosemary. I banged the forget about it, bada bing, in there. So I got that all basically powdered up, okay? So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to take, take some of that out. And you, you, what you have there is about a quarter, not even, a teaspoon. Oh, I'd say an eighth of a teaspoon. And that's just going to give it a nice, again, a background flavor. Rosemary and basil, they're powerful flavors. So what we want here is a background flavor, okay? And it's just going to give it a nice hint. Like, oh, I can taste the rosemary in there now. Like, oh my gosh, that's a rosemary dish. Now what we're going to take is a quarter cup of truffle oil. This is white truffle oil. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. I don't know if you guys love truffles, but we were, uh, there's a cute picture on our, uh, on our website. My, my kids and I were out in, uh, in, the Umbra, in the forest of Umbria, and we had pigs, and we were, and we were uh, looking for truffles, which was so much fun with my cousins, my cuginas. And then we're going to crush a little pepper in there. And my kids had so much fun. The pigs are the best. The worry with a pig, when they, look for, uh, when they look for a truffle, is the pigs will eat the truffle. So dogs are, are really good, but they can't necessarily dig for them as well. A pig can dig for them really well, but you'll find that the... Uh, the observer there, your hunter, uh, which would in this case be us, you had to have a pole and you had to watch the pig because once they found the truffle, they tried to eat it and it was it was so funny. But those are gold, the black and the white truffles, oh my gosh. And they're like a, essentially an underground mushroom and uh, boy, they're great. So they have a really unique flavor and in certain areas of Italy, they are, uh, they're a must and they'll shave them really thin and they can... You can sprinkle them right on there like you're going to have a, a piece of garlic, you'd have a piece of uh, truffle, and they can cost hundreds of dollars um, for just one truffle. So, so this is going to cook down, and again, you don't want to have it too hot, which we're not, right? But you want to make sure that everything, is, in essence, is being sautéed down. And the onions are going to get really tender. And when this is done, and you're basically done, when this is done is when you can push on the onion and it just almost gets mushy. As opposed to when you push on it like right now, you can almost feel a crunch. The fibers in the onion haven't been broken down yet. So that will take a couple of minutes, and I would not leave it. i stay right there because i got the heat a little bit warmer here. Everything's ready to go. I don't want to put these in necessarily yet because one of the things I like to do is I like to take the plates. So here's the plates we're going to use, right? I'm going to put those right over here to get them warm. And then what I like to do is just put a little bit of a drizzle of my uh, oil in the bottom, then put the gnocchis on top, and then put a little bit more on top, hit it with a little cheese, and unbelievable. So, and this is perfect. I'll tell you, just the smell of that. Oh, and like I told you guys before, heat control is a challenge for a lot of people. I know my son and I, we always kind of go through that with him because he likes to crank it. You know, you want to cook something quick, so you crank the heat. Oh, we got some good music playing right now. And uh, just pull it off to the side. And if you find it getting a little warm, just pull it, pull it off the heat for a minute. Let it cool. And we're just going to cook that down. My camera person said that she wanted some gnocchi, so I'm going to let her have one. I'm going to have ten. I'm just kidding. So we're going to pop those in there. And what's nice is these are just starting to firm up. So they're just starting to dry 
up a little bit, and that's nice. One of the um, nice parts of making a pasta or a dough is you want to have like an al dente. You want to have something that's a little firmer, and you need your pasta to dry or harden a little bit. With fresh pasta, unless you let it dry, it's tough to get an al dente um, because it's already soft. And most Italians, especially you know the true Italian, they always like that al dente. The reason being is you don't want your pasta to be gooey. You want it to be chewy. You want it to almost have almost have a crunch to it, almost. And again, a really nice pasta. This dough is just so perfect. The a real nice pasta. Like you can smell it. The dough will uh, the dough will carry its own. Oh, that's perfect. I'm gonna shut that off because that's done. Put a few more in here, and then and there's flour on them. And don't worry about that; they'll wash right off in the water. And we got a Harry Connick plan, which is great. And there's so many different sauces that you can use. I wanted to do a light sauce. I've done it again. I've done some simple tomato sauces, and one of my favorites that my grandmother used to do. We used to make homemade pasta, capellini, like angel hair. But then we would do. Uh, Butter and cheese. We call it filadini. It was just, oh, my favorite. And like I was telling you, one of my favorite things, once you, uh, that's perfect. Once you um, smell that, or once I smell that, oh, I, I know I always say it, but, oh my God, that is just absolutely delicious. Yeah, see, so the onions now have cooked down just enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a spoon, I'm going to spread these, so let me turn that, so I can get this, just a, just a little bit, like you, you're putting like a, like a tablespoon, just a, a little something to put on the bottom, that's it, that's it, and here we got truffle, we got onion, we got rosemary, how perfect is that, right? And then we've got some gnocchis already being done here, right? So while they're finishing up, you can see, see how they float? They're done. They're done right now. Once they float, and what I want to do is put, put some cheese. So I got my cheese right here to finish that plate. Oh my God, they're going to be good. So you're going to take, and you don't need a lot of sauce, because that's strong. The sauce is strong. And remember, this, the, the flavor of this will carry, carry its own. I mean, that's, that's a really nice, that's a ricotta gnocchi, right? So, look at those, aren't they cute? So once they float, they're done. Again, and see how the texture is nice? They're rubbery, you know, but they're not heavy. You don't want a gnocchi to be heavy or dense. That's why, for what it's worth, when you, when you use a potato gnocchi, a lot of recipes call for um, boiling your potatoes. I totally disagree with that. I would tell you to use a ricer always. That's a must. But you also will bake the potato, and if you bake the potato, you're not immersing it in the water, so it doesn't get it doesn't get the starch gooey. You don't want the starch to be gooey. We got one straggler here. Okay, there we go. We're perfect. Shut that off. And now, again, you don't want to go real heavy, but you got that nice truffle. So I'm going to take about there you go, right there. You get a couple onions so you can see them on the top. That's beautiful. With a little garlic. Right? And then watch this. Here, bring this right over here. Make a mess right. And then I'm going to take this. And then we're going to use a little bit of Romano on top. And you can use a little parsley or, you know, finish it up with something really nice. Look at that. Hold on. Hold on. Un moment. That's right out with a... Hold on. I mean, just the smell, it's, um, it's amazing, especially that truffle oil on there, and the cheese on top, oh my god, that is, when you smell it, it smells like Italy, it smells like Rome, I mean, I'm right back on the streets of Rome with that dish, absolutely delicious, what's great is we made a ton of gnocchi, so you can sit down, have some Pellegrino, some wine, sit down with your family, Play some great music, tell stories, shut the phones off, shut the TV off, hug and spend time with your loved ones. Guys, thanks for spending a little time with me this morning. I know I'm talking with a knock in my mouth, but it's absolutely delicious. Make sure you subscribe to our videos. 
Have a great week spending time with your loved ones. I'll talk to you guys next week. Bon appetit.